All right, good morning, Cornerstone Church. Welcome to the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Are we thankful today? All right, would you stand with us as we sing our opening hymn? Now thank we all our God. It's good to see everyone here today. I'm grateful that we can worship the Lord together on this uh, Sabbath. Um, if you're a guest here today, we're especially glad that you're here. If you're a guest, we, you should, uh, we're especially impressed that you made it as a guest today with the road being closed. You had to navigate around the barriers, so um, congratulations on getting here. But if you're a guest here today, we'd love to give you a, uh, a gift bag with a uh, coffee mug in it and some goodies to express our appreciation for you coming. Um, pray that you feel welcomed and hope to see you again sometime soon. Um, got a lot of announcements to share today. The, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for helping with the shoe boxes. We delivered 72 shoe boxes and $900 in donations uh, to the Samaritan's Purse Ministry, which is an awesome way to share the gospel and encourage kids for the Christmas season. So thank you so much for being a big part of that. Um, this week's also a big week. We got our Thanksgiving initiative this week uh, as it's Thanksgiving week. And there's kind of a two-part uh, process here to this ministry. On Monday, uh, we're partnering with Bethel Church and, of course, the four-day movement to bring hot, hot meals to the base. And um, if you'd like to be a part of that, there's uh, different ways you can help. You can help uh, actually assemble the meals if you like. Try to get here about 3 o'clock if you want, want to do that. Um, Four Day has volunteers with the Four Day Movement. There's volunteers from Bethel. So Pastor DJ is not relying upon us exclusively to do this. But if you'd like to help, we'd love for you to come. And so if you'd like to come around 3 to help assemble the, the plates, um, if you're going to help drive on base, try to get here around 4, 430. And then we'll actually leave about 5 o'clock. Is that right, Pastor DJ? Yeah. Awesome. And uh, the, the goal is to assemble and deliver 300 hot meals to the airmen on base and they always really appreciate that, and a lot of them are, all of them are away from home. A lot of them don't have a place to go for Thanksgiving, so this is a great way to encourage and support them. So, And then on Tuesday, we, oh, then here's, uh, here's uh, the youth uh, partnering over with Bethel last week, uh, putting together some food boxes that also will be delivered this week. Thank you all for helping with that. Um, many of us were here for our last, uh, last Wednesday for Wednesday Night Connect, so we weren't part of this this. Uh, ministry project, but the youth went with Pastor DJ to put those together and give it kind of a Thanksgiving feel with, by decorating the boxes, so it was fun. 
Um, so it's a great, great event. And then um, this Tuesday, we're going to host a Thanksgiving dinner here in the Fellowship Hall, as we've done past years. And that's a great opportunity for us just to extend the love of Christ to people and to offer a Thanksgiving experience for uh, people in our community that maybe don't have a place to go or um, just looking for a little help. So we can host that meal at 6 o'clock. And if you'd like to come about 4.30 or to 5 to drop off food items or to help set up, and then just, just sit down and have the meal with, with our guests. It is a great way to um, participate as well. So thank you for being involved with that. It's always a great day. Um, coming up soon is the Child of Promise. So that is uh, December 20th, 21st and 22nd. And many of you have seen it, but it's a great show every year. And it proclaims the amazing truth that God fulfilled the promises of the Old Testament by sending his son, our savior, into the world. It's a great musical, and um, it's a good show, so I hope you can come. Invite a friend. There's a lot of people in our community that still haven't seen it, so uh, please, uh, please support that ministry and, and invite people to, to come see it as well. After church today, um, hold on a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're having a pot, ladies are having a potluck on December 6th. Uh, ladies, lady Bible study members, and anyone else would like to come, just let Sherry know, RSVP to her. It's at her house on uh, December 6th at 6 o'clock. So it's a good chance for the ladies to enjoy some time together and enjoy some good food and celebrate the Christmas season. And then on the 7th, um, we're having four days annual 4K, 8K walk run. DJ, you want to say something about that? Or? Um, just very quickly. Okay. <laughs> I want to say that earlier. It is a walk and a run. So if you are a professional runner, like Mr. Gallagher or like Brother DiRuggio, <laughs> then you can run. But if you just simply want to come and walk, we have a 4K and 8K, and then there'll be a beautiful children's walk at the end. So don't be afraid of that. We just want you to come and have a good day. There's going to be people coming from all over the county, some from out of the county, and some from cities far away. So I would challenge you to come and have a good time. First Lady will be out there with all of her energy, so get ready for that. And um, we hope that you'll be a part of it December the 7th. It'll be at Wayne Community College in the backside of the college near the child care facility. And we will start the run at 9, walk at 9, and then we'll meet up around 8 o'clock for hellos. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, and they have snacks too, right? It's a lot of snacks. Yeah, so you can enjoy the snacks. So, yeah, so I'm going to walk and have a snack. It's a great, great event. It's a great, great way to support Four Day and just uh, get the word out, promote the ministry, have some fun, get some exercise. So please come to that. And then later that day is Christmas caroling, and uh, uh, Jeannie Spence is kind of leading the, the way with that. There's a sign-up sheet out here by the, by the door. Um, just bring your voice, bring your heart to serve the Lord, and share Christmas cheer. It'll be a good evening. December 10th is our night of sharing, and what that is is our mission team has periodically kind of gone out in the community. Uh, Pastor DJ has shown some pictures of other events where we just go out in the community, share, share a little goodie bag, uh, share the love of Christ, invite people to church, share the gospel. Um, if you want to be a part of that, please join us on December 10th. We're going to get here. It's a Tuesday. We're going to get here about 5 o'clock. Um, well, we'll have, our, we'll have our goodies assembled by 5 o'clock, and we'll be ready to go out at that point. So uh, please join us. It's a great time. Okay, I think that's all of our announcements, and Kathy Sinnott is going to lead us in the call to worship. Sorry? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say earlier. Um, we're having lunch at Patrick and Blondine's after church today, so um, if you have time to bring something, that'd be great. If you want to just bring yourself, come. Well, there's always plenty of food, and uh, we enjoy our time together, so come have lunch with us. Okay, thanks, Kathy. I will be reading Psalm 21 this morning. It is a psalm of thanksgiving for victory. In your strength, the king rejoices, O Lord, and in your help, how greatly he exalts. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. For you meet with rich blessings. You set a crown of fine gold on his head. You, he asked you for life. You gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. His glory is great through your help. Splendor and majesty you bestow on him, you bestow on him blessings forever. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord, 
and through the steadfast love of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Your hand will find out all your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You will make them a fiery furnace when you appear. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath, and fire will consume them. You will destroy their offspring from the earth and their children from among humankind. If they plan evil against you, if they devise mischief, they will not succeed. For you will put them to flight. You will aim at their faces with your bows. Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your power. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, as we enter your house today, help us to place at the altar, at the foot of the cross, all our cares, burdens, struggles, and our praises. Help us to remember that you are always walking with us. May our hearts be open to receive the word that DJ preaches today. May it sustain us through the week until we can be together again. And we ask this in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, we'll continue our worship. Are you thankful for his grace today? some classic praise and worship for you this morning and uh, give your heart to the Lord this morning as we uh, continue to give him praise. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. So with the sinner's restless heart, you lead us by still waters into mercy, and nothing can keep us apart. So remember. So God of Jacob, you use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation, and all your people sing along. So remember, so Is enough. 
grace is enough. Let's praise the Lord today. Your grace is enough. Oh, we praise you. Your grace is enough for me.
okay, isn't it? So y'all need to grab him up. Yes. <clears throat> I saw your little wave back there. Happy birthday, sir. And then uh, happy birthday this week to um, Miss Sue Woodyard. Where's Miss Sue? Yep. Where'd Miss Sue go? Mm. Oh, there you are. And to the best baking lady, if you bake your own cake, I know you're small. So <laughs> happy birthday, ma'am. Yes, and Shannon Holt, who is keep. Oh, I thought you were keeping us safe out there. It's Shannon Holt's birthday today as well. So happy birthday to you. And she also celebrated a 25th anniversary. So you turned 24 and had a 25th anniversary. How'd you do that? I don't know. So happy birthday to all of y'all. And to all of you young folks, I mentioned birthdays at the beginning because we're getting ready to go into a Advent season where we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Yeah. And I don't know if y'all like calendars, but today is actually the last day of the Christian calendar, and then we go into the beginning of the Christian calendar. So this is where we go from just this whole calendar that has taken place from Jesus dying on the cross and his resurrection, and now we're going to start it all over and go with his birth. So this is what I want y'all to do. During this season right now where we're kind of like in a transition, I want y'all to go around and give thanks for everything. So I want y'all to give thanks for each other. Give thanks for Miss Pam today. Go and give thanks for your parents. Give thanks for your food. Let this be an entire week of nothing but giving thanks. Will you try it? Will you try it? If you're going to try it, give me a high five. <laughs> that was delayed. We need to, uh, that was delayed. How about you? See, she came strong. Work with him, if you would. A week of give thanks, yes. Oh, yes. And both of y'all work with him, and all the above will be good. I love it. He said thank you. I love it. Lord, we give thanks to you for these babies. And Lord God, during this season, dear Lord, where we come to the end of something in the beginning, we do it with an excitement and we celebrate. For all the birthdays and anniversaries and all those things that we talk about in our church, we say thank you. But most of all, we celebrate you, Christ our King. Bless us during this season that we'll remember the reason for the season. And in this Thanksgiving, God, I thank you that there will be you as the focus and that there will be restoration, there will be all kinds of good food, and we will love on you like we never have in each other. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Yeah. Enjoy this morning. I thank God for you. All right, God bless you all. Thank you, Pam, for teaching. All right, and I want to give thanks for Pastor DJ today. Um, I'm taking a little, a little hiatus today from preaching. Uh, as he mentioned, it is Advent beginning next Sunday. Advent uh, means coming. And so for the next four Sundays, we are going to celebrate the coming, the promise of Jesus as he was born as a baby 2,000 years ago and, and the promise of his coming again, of his, his promised return. And so I had to um, want to take an extra week to kind of plan, prepare, pray to see what I'd be preaching on uh, over the Advent season. So thank you, DJ, for uh, filling the pulpit this Sunday. And we're looking forward to what God will, will speak through you today. So thank you for that. Um, one other thing, this is not church-related, but I have to say it, um, Shelton has done a phenomenal job in this musical called Hello, Dolly, and if you're not going to Patrick and Blondine's for lunch after church, I want to encourage you all to go watch this show. It's at Lenore Community College at 2 o'clock, and uh, Shelton's got one of the main, main parts, and he does a phenomenal job. It's really amazing, so I hope that you can uh, support him and enjoy that, enjoy that show. So um, let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we do thank you for your good and perfect gifts, and we thank you that you have entrusted in us a variety of different skills and abilities and, and talents and longings and desires, and, and, and Shelton puts it on, uh, that on full display in, in this musical. You can see the joy in his heart as he uses the gifts you've entrusted to him uh, to sing and dance and act, and uh, help us each, Lord, to identify the gifts you have given us and to use them with joyful hearts to express our thanks to you um, by using the things you've entrusted to us uh, for your purposes and for your glory and, and, and also for our joy. Uh, we thank you, God, that you've called us here together uh, to gather as your people, to give our hearts to you in worship. And Lord, we want to glorify you. We want to amplify you. We want to celebrate you. Um, we want your glory to, to cover the heavens and, and the earth to be full of your praise. 
Uh, we thank you, God, that as, as your people in this family of faith, we can be part of that today. Uh, Lord, I thank you for Samaritan's Purse and this wonderful ministry that we got to participate in this week. And we pray that you go with these shoeboxes, that you, your Holy Spirit will be present with these gifts. And we pray that uh, children will be filled with, with joy and, and thanks and anticipation as they open these boxes. And we pray, Lord, that they would encounter the love of Christ and receiving the gospel message and, and just a glimpse of your love uh, through these presents. God, we thank you for the child of promise, and we're so grateful that this musical um, celebrates biblical truth and reminds us how you have uh, fulfilled the promises you made 4,000 years ago in the time of Abraham and all through the generations that one day you would send your son uh, to, to meet our greatest needs and our deepest longings, that you would uh, bring us forgiveness and salvation uh, through faith in the Savior, and for that we are forever grateful. God, we thank you for the portal, and we thank you for the, um, the, for the anticipation we have and uh, the doors of the portal being opened soon, and we thank you for the lives that will be impacted and transformed in the name of Christ, and we, we look forward to that, God. God, we thank you for um, Scott and Ann Emerson's daughter, Elizabeth, got married this past week, and we're just, just grateful for that union, and we ask your blessings upon them, Lord God, that you draw them closer to you and to each other. And that their, their relationship as husband and wife will be a rich expression of your love and your faithfulness for your people. And they'll be filled with, with your love and peace and joy uh, for many years to come in their life together. God, we thank you that uh, Tim Malloy's grandson Isaiah is doing so well. After that scary fall that he had and severe head injury, we ask that you continue to strengthen him and bless him with health and make him well. We thank you that Bev Carroll's grandson is doing well after having a new pacemaker put in, and we ask your blessings upon him and just help him to return to normal activities and be healthy and well and strong. God, we thank you for watching over and, and keeping Harry Sinnes's uh, daughter in your care, and we trust that Kelly will be, make a full recovery um, from the paralysis that she's struggled with and from the brain tumor that she's uh, received treatment for. Uh, bless her with health and many, many years of, of long and prosperous life. Uh, God, we thank you that you're with, um, with um, Martha's brother, and we ask your blessings to be upon him, Lord God, as he's dealing with this tumor in his esophagus, and we pray for healing and strength. Uh, we thank you, God, that Marsha Petty's hip replacement surgery went well last week, and we pray for continued healing and strength. And we thank you, Lord, that the love of Christ and the gift of your Holy Spirit is with Marsha Tucker, and we, we ask that you bless her and keep her in your care. We thank you that Mark Onekey's um, procedure went well this past week after initial, initial complications, and we pray for continued healing and strength for him. And we thank you, Lord, that Dana Hopkins' uh, surgery went well this week also, and we pray that you strengthen her and bless her and watch over her and keep her in your care. God, we love you, and we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the chance to worship you today, to sing our praises to you, to bow before you in prayer, uh, to extend your love to each other in fellowship, to hear the proclamation of your word and to respond in faith. God, as the waters cover the sea, may the truth of your word cover the earth, and may it start here today at Cornerstone. We, we love you, and we give this time to you. Uh, we ask your blessings upon Pastor DJ as he proclaims your word today. May we be strengthened in our faith and drawn into your presence. We pray these things all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I'll be between this and this, and I'll keep this on, so if you'll pause me when I get back to here on this one. You can mute me. Does that make sense? Okay, I just wanted to get that right. So I need to see how many of you paid attention to the pictures this morning that were flashing across the screen. Did anybody see those pictures flashing across the screen? There was some that were of people working, and then there just happened to be this wonky picture of me with a gentleman standing there at the van with the door open. Did anybody see that picture? Okay, that's a very important picture it, because it begins my sermon as I pray this morning. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. And Lord God, this is all about you. This is all about you. 
But God, I die to self so that you will be seen, so that you will be heard, so that your word will go forth, that we may not sin against you. And Lord God, we thank you and celebrate you, O Christ our King. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. So I begin um, this past week, and it's amazing how when you're putting a sermon together, how God will show you things, and he kind of sets you up for when you are preparing for a sermon. So this past week, I had two different events that took place in which I was blessed to be impacted by a shepherd. Uh, we were at um, Faith Fellowship Church, Bethel, Bethel Fellowship Church this week. And we went to go and put together Thanksgiving boxes. And if you walked in the hallway this morning, you saw a bunch of boxes along the wall. And those boxes will be handed out in this coming week. Well, I wish y'all knew the journey that it took to get those boxes there because I was instructed to take our van and put it in the front lawn of their church so we could load the boxes. Unbeknownst to me, it had rained 25 inches or so that day and had been dry. And when I pulled the van up in the front of the church, the van sunk. And so Pastor DJ trying to look cool to open the doors actually stepped out into a stack of mud about this thick. And the van was just spinning. So I'm out in the middle of the country. It was a little bit dark. And if you saw the gentleman that was in front of me in that picture, that gentleman came up to me and he held me on my shoulder and he said, DJ, it's going to be all right. He said, it's going to be all right. Now, I'm not going to deny I was a little crashing out. And for those that are teenagers and know the word crashing out, it means I was starting to feel PTSD. I had all these thoughts. The van stuck. We're not going to be able to load it up. And he simply said to me, I'm going to go get my pastor's truck. I'm going to go get a strap, and we're going to pull this truck out of here. And he said it confidently. He said it like we were going to get it out in five seconds. And I said, okay. <laughs> he went and got the pastor's Ram 1500. He went and got a strap that I didn't even know could fit on the back of a truck with no tow because we didn't have our tow hooked up. And he just strapped it around the back of the van, strapped it on the back of the truck. That's him. That man right there, you see me finally smiling again after I cried. And <laughs> they took that strap and they pulled that van out of the mud. And we were able to load it up in another area. And the pastor just came and said, don't worry, that's happened to me before too. And that brought me some comfort. That was the first event this week that really showed me that Christ is really real. But it also showed me that among us, we have a bunch of shepherds and a bunch of kings in modern day that are following the leading of our Christ. The second thing that happened this week is I had the favor of going to lunch with two amazing men. I won't say any names. But this week I went to lunch, and as a young CEO, I'm still learning to lead a nonprofit, and I make mistakes every day. I'm trying to get better at being a CEO. I'm trying to get better at being a dad. I'm trying to get better at being a husband. I'm trying to get better at being the son of the most high, just trying every day. Well, God blessed me with two shepherds this week that took me to lunch, and they sat me down, and they gave me some insight that let me know that they definitely are of the mold of Christ the King. And I wanted to give you those events because those are real-life things that are happening. And this sermon today, I really, really believe that it's going to impact every single person in this service because of Christ the King that we serve. I went into Psalms 21 this week, and it's funny because sometimes you can just kind of read the Psalms and you come out saying, oh, that felt good. It was just another Psalm. But in Psalms chapter 21 and 22, my eyes were opened to something that had been there for quite a long time. And I hope that your eyes will be opened up as well. Would you open your Bibles to Psalm 21 if you have them? We need to go on a journey together. Now, Psalm 21, I will read in its entirety. And Psalm 22, I'll give you a synopsis of it because it's very long. But I want you to know context of Psalm 22. Before we get to that Psalm and before I read it, though, I want to let you know that today is the last day of the church year. And some of you may not know that. Um, liturgically, it's the church does not follow the normal lunar calendar. Uh, today, we're finishing the church year and today is going to be a celebration. So if you're sleepy, you better wake up. 
I'm serious. Because at times, when I say Christ the King and I raise my hand, I need you to clap, yell, scream, or whatever you want to do. Now, notice I didn't say every time because it would get old and you would think it was redundant. But at times when I say Christ the King and I raise my hand, I want you to clap and celebrate because our God deserves to be celebrated. Amen, church? And no matter what denomination we are, we can be Baptist, we can be Presbyterian, we can be Episcopalian. We need to celebrate God, period. Because if you think it's quiet in heaven, you better get ready. It's such a kind of wild time of year because it's where we come off of celebrating Jesus' triumphant move to the cross for us. And you may say triumphant. Jesus went and died for us, and he died a really rough death for us. But it is a triumphant time because it sets up our calendar to celebrate who Jesus is, but also to reset and to remember who Jesus was, is, and will be. We celebrate Christ the King this Sunday, and then next week we'll celebrate and we will reset to Advent. Today is an opportunity for us, though. It's an opportunity to remember or be introduced to who our Jesus is and was and what it means to be a king and how we as Christ followers can truly call Jesus our king. You're going to see my sermon um, points, and I'm asking you some questions. With those questions, I really want you to process those questions today. And I want God to speak to you in a mighty way. Psalm 21, if you would read with me. And you don't have to read out loud, but just if you'll follow. In your strength, the king rejoices, O Lord. And in your help, how greatly he exalts. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips, Selah. For you meet him with Rich blessings. You set a crown of fine gold on his head. He asked you for life. You gave it to him. Length of days and forever and forever and ever. His glory is great through your help. Splendor and majesty you bestow on him. You bestow on him blessings forever. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. And through the steadfast love of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Your hand will find out all your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You will make them like a fiery Furnace when you appear. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath and fire will consume them. You will destroy their offspring from the earth and their children from among humankind. If they plan evil against you, if they devise mischief, they will not succeed. For you will put them to flight. You will aim at their faces with your bows. Be exalted, O Lord. In your strength we will sing and praise your power. Amen and amen. Psalms 21. Now, Psalms 21 is very intense, and it was extremely intense to me. It's David celebrating a victory. However, Scholars, as I have studied this, see Psalm 21 as a prophetic picture of Jesus Christ, the ultimate king who triumphs over evil. He doesn't kind of win over evil. Jesus Christ, our king, triumphs over evil. Amen. So for those of you that have been wallowing and you have been struggling, just know this. Christ, our king, Christ, your king, has triumph, triumph over the enemy and what is evil. And the intense suffering and anguish of someone feeling forsaken by God is expressed going into 22. 
because 22 has some cries and some pain. Have any of you ever had any cries and some pain? That's not rhetorical. Raise your hand. Because if your hand's not raised, then you better prepare, maybe. There's an opening line in Psalm 22. It says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have you ever heard that before? From helping me from the words of my groaning is what it says. Let's just travel through it because I want you to experience this. The first 21 verses, they detail physical and emotional torment of a speaker. This is someone who is just going through something. Please continue. Do you have that? Yes. Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you are wholly enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. Oh, if he trusted, if they trusted and he delivered them, oh, what he will do for you. To you they cried and they were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am but a worm and not a human. I am scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads at me. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Ooh, I could probably pause and walk away. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. If I can pause there, we're going to continue in 22. But listen at the detail of the physical and emotional torment of that speaker. Think about the physical and the emotional torment of Christ, our King, but we transition. We go from, God, please hear me. I'm in the midst of this. We go to 22. And then there is a shift. There is a shift in the tone. It says, I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. 
all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. Let me repeat that line before you go. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. Please finish. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Hallelujah. Christ the King. Hallelujah, and let's worship. That's the worst celebration I've ever heard in my life. Hallelujah, let's worship and celebrate. The graphic descriptions of the suffering that I just read out of Psalms 22 are widely seen as a prophetic picture of Jesus' crucifixion. And the forsaken speaker in this person being used, David, represents Jesus enduring the wrath of God on behalf of you and on behalf of me. Thank you, O Christ the King. Would you please put up my points? Those contrasting themes celebrate God's power. And they celebrate God's power and blessing that have been placed on a righteous king. And that right, righteous king is Jesus. Both Psalms are considered to have messianic implications, but it foreshadows Jesus' triumphant reign. 22 highlights the suffering that he would endure on the cross, but it brings lasting victory. So my first question to you today is this. And I'm not going to stay in this portion of this sermon very long, but I have one simple question for you. Who is your king? Who is your king? Have you been celebrating and worshiping and trying to know more about Christ the king? Or has your king looked like some of the kings that used to be the kings that are no longer the kings? And I'll explain that in the second part of the sermon. But my simple question at the end of this section is, who is your king? Let's transition into my second point, if we can. Be thankful for Christ, our king. And there is a major reason why we should. Point two. I want to read out of Romans 6. It was another one of the verses that you may have sawn as we were preparing to come in here. It reads as such, Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly... Ooh, listen at this. We will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Do you hear that? We hear these words all of the time. But if we have died in Christ and we have given him us, then we will live in Christ and be united with him in resurrection like him. And some of us have been wallowing in our old mess. We... We are the brothers and sisters of Christ the King. And he has resurrected. Let's be thankful for Christ our King. Now throughout history, I had a chance to read through the book of Jeremiah. And I don't know if you've ever read the book of Jeremiah. But Jeremiah 23 hit me strong. So if you are taking notes, I want to challenge you to go dig into the book of Jeremiah what a prophet, because this prophet, quietly, he told us like it was, and God talked through him. God talked through him. Jeremiah 23 is where I will sit for just a second, and this accentuates being thankful for Christ our King. Now, throughout history, they called kings kings, but they also called them shepherds. Now, in the eastern part of the country at that time, they would refer to shepherds as people that worked with lowly people or who also worked with sheep. 
But they also would call kings, um, kings, and they were the people that were supposed to properly work with sheep or the people. Now, the kings or the shepherds of Jeremiah's time, they were greedy and they wanted power and they wanted prosperity. Now, that doesn't sound too unfamiliar in today's time. Now, they were called to provide for the people. They were called to provide for the widows. They were called to provide for the poor. They were called to provide for the oppressed. And in Jeremiah, you can feel the expectation for a new kind of king. So let's travel through Jeremiah 1 through, I'll go 1 through 6. Jeremiah 23, if you have your Bibles, 1 through 6. And stay with me because I'm telling you the why of why Christ the King is so important. This is what Jeremiah 23 says, and this is the Lord declaring. I will send disaster upon the leaders of my people, the shepherds of my sheep, for they have destroyed and scattered the very ones they were to care for. Instead of leading my flock to safety, you have deserted them and you have driven them to destruction. And now I will pour out judgment upon you for the evil you have done to them. And I will gather together the remnant of my flock. I will gather together the remnant of my flock from wherever I have sent them and I will bring them back into their own fold and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will appoint responsible shepherds to care for them and they shall not need to be afraid again. All of them shall be accounted for continually. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will place a righteous branch upon King David's throne. He shall be a king who shall rule with wisdom and with justice and cause righteousness to prevail everywhere throughout the earth. And this is his name, the Lord of our righteousness. At that time, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in peace. Amen. So during the context of my study, and I don't want to go too deeply into all of the shepherds and the kings that were, that were leading, but I will say there were names like Jehoaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoachin, or Ken, and Zedekiah. And each and every one of these kings were looked at by people as their shepherd and their king. And they failed to do their duty. They did not execute justice in the morning, and they did not deliver by helping those that were oppressed and those who were being overcome by evil. And they did not judge those that were dealing with hunger. They did not judge those that were stealing from. And their eyes and their hearts were not on God. God's woe is out of compassion for the victims of these self-serving shepherds. So if we had shepherds that were leading us like this, shepherds who had driven people away, Shepherds had, who had not dealt with evil doings, shepherds who were not helping the widow, shepherds and kings who were not helping the oppressed and the poor. Well, thank you, God, for Christ our King. We needed a way. We needed the right way. So thank you, God, because not God knew that we needed to be under new leadership. He said in his word, the people will no longer fear or be dismayed. And he gives us encouragement throughout books of Deuteronomy and Joshua. And at some point, I will dig deeper into them. But there was definitely a judgment for the leadership that was. But there was definitely some hope on the future for the leadership that was coming. And that is what makes me so excited personally. And I hope it makes you excited about Christ the King. I hope it makes you excited because, because of Christ the King, he has given us, he has given us hope. 
He has given us a way, and he has done it in a leadership that is way different than what we were mired in before. Let me explain. Jesus, our king, was born, and he was born to bring us, if you'll look in, if you'll skip, please, you'll see into three, please. Because of Christ our king, we can live in OFC. And I know if anybody saw the sermon online, you were like, whoa, what does OFC mean? Christ our king has given us a beautiful, beautiful gift. Number one, he is the ultimate gift. But he has given us some, some things that we can live by. The first thing is, because of Christ our king, we can live with optimism. Our king has given us optimism. Optimism of trust and an optimism of hope. And a lot of you are like, well, what in the world does optimism even mean? Some of us can spit out pessimism. But some may be wondering, what does optimism mean? Optimism is the attitude of expecting good things to come from life. It is the desire for good things for other people also. So guess what? Because we have Christ the King, we can live a life and we can trust and we can hope for optimism. So for those of you that have been wallowing the woe is me, it's time for you to get over it and celebrate and remember Christ the King. Hallelujah. And you can go ahead and clap. Yeah, this is a new day for you. We gave our lives to Jesus, and some of us have wallowed in pessimism. Oh, and, and there's a word that I, wanna, I want you to be careful of. I, I have had it brought to my attention recently. Oh, God is amazing, and he is great, but. Okay? Erase that. Uh-huh. You can laugh at that because that, that's been some of, the, some of the conversation. No, God is amazing and great, exclamation mark. If you put a period, you just okay, exclamation mark. Because of Christ the King, you can walk around with optimism. So if you're going into your job, you walk around, you are a child of the Most High, Christ the King. If you've been struggling in your home, you can go around today with optimism when you go to that threshold because you serve Christ the King. When you walk into church, you don't have to come in here feeling kind of okay. You serve Christ the King. Yes. Yes. And we clap, but living it is so hard sometimes. So you need to go and put a big old O in your refrigerator that says, optimism, I live in Christ the King. You put that O. There are seven statements that God uses in his word that lets us know that we can be optimistic. And these come back out of the psalm that we heard earlier. I'm just going to recite them quickly because I do not want to be in here until noon because I could. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. If you've had trouble, know that he's going to answer you. And it may not be in your time, but it's going to be in his time by way of Christ the King. May the name of God of Jacob defend you. You are defended. You don't have to try and defend yourself. You are defended. Thank you, Lord, for Christ the King. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. God will send you help. Ever bumped into an angel you didn't recognize before in your walk? Thank you, Christ the King. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burst sacrifice. And that sacrifice can be your sacrifice of praise or your sacrifice of prayer or your sacrifice of time for him. Thank you for showing us Christ the King. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all of your purpose. Whether you believe it or not, Christian, Christ follower, you have purpose. And God's going to fulfill it in you. Every single one of you has purpose in Christ the King. And he will fulfill it. Whether your purpose is to go and do staplers on paper every day, you do it for the glory of God. And you do it for Christ the King. And lives will be changed because that same stapler that you put on that paper has some doctrine that helps somebody smile and feel better about who they were. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions that go before him. May the Lord, um, may the King answer us when we call because God hears the prayers of the righteous. Straight out of his word. Now hear this in confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, 
We know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him, Christ the King. That comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. You serve Christ the King. Now, I said the O was optimism. The next one is the faith of trust and hope in Christ our King. Who is God's anointed here? Christ the King. This is the, Christ is the Hebrew word for Messiah. Our Messiah is anointed. Jesus is God's anointed today, and God has saved him. We see how God answered Jesus from heaven. We see how God saved Jesus with the strength of his right hand. This Jesus, God has raised up, of which we are all his witnesses. That's from Acts 2 and 32. And it is him who raised up on the third day and showed God openly. So if God did this for Jesus, who is Christ the King, he will do it for us who have faith in Christ Jesus the King. Celebrate Christ the King. Hallelujah. If God did these things for Jesus, he will do it for us who have faith in Christ the King. Romans 8 and 32, if you're taking notes. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Do you see how beautiful and inclusive that is? He gave us Jesus, our king. And if he can do those things for Jesus, then those things are done for us in Jesus' name. A hopeful trust has faith in God, Christ our king. And then last, the sea. And I told you I wouldn't be long-ish. How many of y'all are sometimes scared in your walk? Let's just be transparent. I'm raising my hand. I'm raising my hand. Sometimes I just feel like I want to know Jesus more. I want to know him more so when those things come, I can be more like him. Do any of y'all ever go through that? Like, I feel like that statement is real. Like, how do I handle when my family's fighting? That's real. Where's my courage when, when my, my marriage is struggling? Where's my courage when I'm faced with being a witness out in this world that has so much evil around me? Where is my courage, God? But we have been given that by way of Christ our King, which goes back to my question, who is your King? Christ the King has armed us, and he's armed us extremely well through God. It takes courage to trust in God and not man. Men will try to persuade you to do things their way. We live in a world where they want us to do it their way. Galatians 1 and 10 says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. So who is your Christ? We must do things God's way. And that takes courage. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. We will. And Philippians 2, 9 and 10 says, Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. You, you because of Christ our King can live in confidence. You. You, because of Christ the King, can live with courage. You. And don't be ashamed of the name. Christians, Christ followers, when we go out of these doors today, when you are faced with whatever's coming, call the name of Jesus and don't be ashamed and watch what God will do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
And don't you dare put, I'm going to call on the name of Jesus in the midst of this, but. Let's not do that. That's very easy. Very easy. Romans 1 and 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Mark 8 and 38 says, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Others may fall, but we are going to be courageous in Jesus' name. Joshua 1 and 9, honestly one of my favorite verses. I needed this verse so bad because it's the day when uh, Ruth and I found out Christian uh, was type 1 diabetic. A car sped in front of us, got in front of us and slowed down. And we didn't understand. But this is what God said to us through that verse. And I hope that his word, for those of you that may have just been stuck lately, and you have kind of like had your view of who your king is distorted. Listen at this. This is what God says. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord, your God, my God, our God, is with you wherever you go, wherever you go. The king is Jesus. Our forever king is King Jesus. Jesus has in mind for us a different form of power. It's not the brute, top-down power of tyrants or dictators it's not it's it's not those that are trying to tell you how to do things not according to God's word but God our king Christ our king has given us a power a true power that is a bottom up power it is of love it is of grace it is of optimism it is of faith and it is of courage let me tell you what true power is in the Christ of in Christ our King. In the midst of the cruelty and in the midst of the scorn, in the midst of the cross, in the midst of an empty tomb. Became our risen Savior. He gave us a comforting spirit. He's given us a community of witnesses. He's given us a movement of love. He's given us a movement of service. He's given us the church. The true king is Christ the king. In the midst of all of that, he is Christ our king. Who is your king? If it's not Jesus today, then we need to rededicate our lives or we need to give our lives to him. Pastor Ryan, I know we have order, but I have to be out of order today. There's some people in their walk that have had their order incorrect. And there's no judgment. There's no judgment because you're in the house of the Lord and you are among your family. Would you put up point four for me? You are among your family. Thank you, God, for Christ our King. How many of you have had things out of order? I want you to come forward. Isaac, if you're here, I need you. If you need to rededicate all of you to God, if things have been heavy, we need to pray. I want you to come to this altar. Pastor Ryan, I need you to join me. This is a day of us not only remembering, but this is a day of us consecrating ourselves again. Thank you for coming forward this morning. Is there anybody else? And this ain't about if you need to give your heart to Jesus. This is if you've just been off. 
This is if you just need to rededicate. This is if you need Christ to be your king. This is if you've been stuck. This is if you've been stagnant. This is if you've been stale. This is if you just have had it out of order. And all I to do is offer a prayer of you. If you are out here and God has called to come and pray over these and you are a deacon of the church or God has a calling, I want you to extend your hand and pray because your brothers and sisters are before you. Thank you. Anybody else that God has called you to pray over your brothers and sisters? Because this day we rededicate to Christ our King. We may be in the last of the Christian calendar, of the calendar in which we follow. But y'all, we celebrate as we get ready for an Advent season of a God who has been born to us, who has shown us the way of how to be humble leaders and to be good people who has shown us to be as Christ the King. Shall we pray? Father, you have brought your children here today. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we unapologetically thank you for being Christ our King. And Lord, each of your children have different circumstances here this morning, God. And we don't know of those circumstances, Father. Lord God, but you know, you know the, the condition of their heart, you know the condition of their mind, you know the condition of their souls, you know the condition of their spirit, you know the condition of their homes, you know the condition of their walk, whether it be in their occupation, you know the condition, dear Lord, even as they face this day. Well, Lord God, we come, we be obedient and we are subservient, God. And we want you, God, to be Christ our King in every part of our lives, God. As we leave these doors today, God, we want to be different, God. We want to be renewed in you. If our heart was given to you, we want to be renewed in you, God. And when we speak it, we want to be unapologetic and we want to be confident. Lord God, thank you that we are overcomers in you and we are more than enough in you, God. <laughs> thank you, God, that we are more than enough in you. Thank you that you are Christ, our King. Lord God, for every brother and sister that stands here today, thank you for renewal of mind, for renewal of soul, and renewal of spirit. In Christ, our King, we submit our physical bodies to you, our soul to you, our spirit to you, and our spirit to the living God. On this day, November 24th, Thank you for change. Oh, Christ, our King. In Jesus' name we pray, and we believe what we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, oh God. Oh, Christ, our King. Christ as our King, we have every reason to be filled with optimism, with faith, and with courage. Our offering text for today is from Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 10, and Moses says, Give liberally and be ungrudging when you do so, for on this account the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake. And so with that confidence and assurance that God does in fact bless us, let us then give boldly and faithfully of our tithes and offerings today.
Father, we thank you that you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, to us, Lord. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And we remember, Lord, that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And God, as we offer these tithes and, and offerings today, they are our expression of our submission to you, our desire to serve you, to honor you in our lives. And we pray that they'll be used for the purposes of bringing glory to your name. God, help us to give our hearts to you, that we'll give our time, our talents, and our treasure for your glory. We love you, God, and pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, please stand now and join me in professing what we believe uh, using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He shall come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And just before, before we go out, just one reminder, um, we're welcome to come and have lunch at Patrick and Blondine's little potluck and time of fellowship. We'd love to see you there. And then also, um, Linda Meyer has been gathering thank you cards that we're going to send to the airmen on Monday, along with the hot meals. And if you'd like to bring some thank you cards uh, Monday afternoon before we go, that would be That'd be a wonderful gift as well. So, Pastor DJ, would you like to give the, the benediction? I will. I thank you for that. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> I do want to say this. Am I on? Am I turned on? Yeah, that works. Dang. Um, it's amazing how God just had a sermon here and then we're living out live in the foyer. Christ the King, oh, he prevails. And thank you for the victory over our lives and over this young man's life. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that because of you, Lord, we can overcome. We can be confident and have courage because of you. Lord God, we can have faith because of you. Dear God, we can have a major amount of love because that is the movement that you have for us. Heavenly Father, may we follow you. May we seek after you tenaciously. And during this last day of the calendar, I pray that we will celebrate you like we never have before in preparation for a reset in which we worship through Advent. But most of all, may we never forget that you are Christ, the King. May we go from this place. May we represent you well. May your reflection shine upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. the